What's cracking, people? It's your man, Cousin T, a.k.a. the Alpha Wingman, representing high-level technicians, operating globally, and beyond. So listen, today I wanted to offer the third dimension and what I have observed in um, many coaches, uh, mentors, and teachers within this space have collectively sort of identified as are valuable dimensions of a woman or desirable uh, women to men who have uh, bettered themselves or on their track of uh, masculine mastery, uh, the type of dimensions that uh, men should identify within the desirable woman (laughs) that fits their tribe, that fits their mission uh, format. And briefly, uh, the first two dimensions that I've made videos on, and I'll link those uh, presentations down below. First dimension was the observation of the female group hierarchy. And that basically is how uh, I've observed how women fall into various positions within their group. The second dimension is how they present uh, socially, individually, and within certain social circles. And in this space, the select manosphere, and gradually expanding out into the greater manosphere at large, uh, we refer to BGS's octane model, or the octane scale, for the not only just social expressions of where a woman is, but her socioeconomic parallel and how that expression mirrors what her um, aptitude is, what her attitude is, the way that she wishes to present to society at large. Today, I wanted to present the third dimension of observable variables that uh, a well-to-do man or a a man on his path to masculine mastery would do well to observe Uh, in the type of desirable woman that he wishes to pursue on his uh, his mission and that dimension is the SMV now a lot of people are familiar with the the sexual marketplace value some people refer to it as the sexual market value I'm going to use a definition that of course uh, I placed in my book the seduction scriptures and so those who have your copy of the seduction scriptures you can turn to page 167 which is part of the glossary once again this is an expansive glossary of more than 300 terms that are covered in the book the seduction scriptures now for those who are waiting on their copy uh, of the seduction scriptures because i know you ordered it right uh, i've put on the screen a a shot of the page which uh, shows a very very simple um, but effective in my opinion definition of sexual market value or smv and it simply states the level of arousing attractiveness a person has. And it refers to who she is, 601 verse 1, and that's page 110. Now, we're going to go over to page 112. Now, the breakdown of uh, the SMB in terms of seduction starts on page 110. But for this podcast, I want to start from the lowest level that's mentioned in this book, which is the five, uh, or the conventional or adjustable woman. I want to start from the five and then take you through six, seven, eight, nine, all the way up to the dime or the ten. Now, I know some men um, uh, believe or have the philosophy that, that there's no such thing as a dime or a ten. I disagree with that. And that's because of a principle that uh, governs the time span that a woman can be considered a quote-unquote dime plus what she represents to the culture at large during that time uh, period that she's considered to be a dime but we'll get into that in just a minute but first let's go over what a five uh, would be now this is a five and six and I'm putting a graphic up that in my opinion represents that and so verse five page number 112 says this the conventional or adjustable woman, the six or five, is raw, tattooed, 
poly and fluid in both her mentality and sexuality. As with any of the women mentioned here, there is much that a self-aware man can learn from interacting with this type as a conscious agent of his activity or technician. She, like the others, craves the attention and leadership of a masculine master. However, her creative energy and intuitive spirit often positions her as a social outlier who can operate in the matrix of the greater society. So for the examples of the five and six, uh, respectively, for the five, I've got Alicia Allen, who played in the classic movie, Are We There Yet? with uh, Ice Cube and Nia Long. And for the six, I've got the conventional beauty, Lupita Nyong'o. Now, moving on to the classic woman. On page 111, this is going to cover the sevens and eights of the female s &B according to the seduction scriptures. Here it says, the classic woman is perhaps the most practical of all women in that her willingness to be upfront and honest about her needs, desires, and abilities are only eclipsed by her dedication to upholding a standard of timeless feminine beauty, grace, charm and wit that has a diverse range of men the world over beating down her door with marriage proposals. This type of woman will inevitably maintain a roster of various men who serve specific functions in her world. Gentlemen, an entire video series can be done on this particular woman. The classic, uh, ranging from seven to eight, represents the sweet spot, sort of the, the sexual market value sweet spot for women who are desired, who are approached, who are actively pursued by the widest variety of men for uh, relationship, companionship, uh, marriage, you know, the mothers of children, uh, and so on and so forth. There can be a thousand podcasts uh, that go into the nuances of why uh, this particular level of the sexual market value is so diverse and is so um, desired by the greatest uh, range of men. But for sake of time, I'm going to just go into the examples. Keep in mind, these are examples of first the seven on the s &B according to the uh, seduction scriptures, and that's Alicia Keys, and the eight, none other than Queen Bay. Mrs. Beyonce Carter. Now, I know a lot of people uh, have their own qualifications and ratings, but we're talking about just overall the aesthetics, uh, the beauty, the symmetry, all of that um, presents her at the top of the classic beauty column, just at the cusp of what comes next. And what comes next is the icon. Now, again, the icon or the iconic beauty uh, in terms of the nine on the uh, sexual market value ranking that can have and it may very well have its own podcast to itself. But just for the sake of time and to keep the context of this podcast, let's go to verse three on page 111. It says the iconic woman or the nine is more and more being held up as the standard of how women should model themselves. In a previous chapter, I pointed out how back in the day, even the most Stepford of Stepford wives got down with the milkman, postman, door to door salesman, pastor, and any guy who met her criteria for sexually arousing masculinity. This doesn't mean that she didn't faithfully perform the prescribed wifely duties of cooking, cleaning, child rearing, and servicing her husband when convenient. Gentlemen, let's be clear, to even approach the psychology of a nine or an iconic woman, it, I mean, it, that requires a deeper dive into what, it, what uh, a self-aware woman um, at that status or that, of that caliber needs to feel whole. And a lot of women who, are, who rank that high they are in constant need of validation. They are in constant need of reassurance of their position. And 
it plays out in their attitudes and their behavior uh, and, and um, their relationships, the relationships with their significant others and the lack thereof significant others. Throughout history, there have been iconic women who in the Western uh, society have not been able to uh, be balanced enough uh, or practical or down to earth um, enough to maintain a sustainable, quote unquote, traditional uh, relationship, whatever that means to whomever you may be. So uh, for the sake of time, I'm going to post this uh, example of an iconic woman on the SMV scale, none other than Naomi Campbell. Now, icons stand the test of time. And since the 90s, Naomi Campbell has uh, represented uh, an iconic beauty in our culture. Of course, we have the Lori Harveys of today. And of course, we got a fine ass mama too. But the true benchmark of what indicates an iconic woman is beauty that stands the test of time. And that time frame has so much to do with uh, a, a woman's SMB, which leads us ultimately to the dime piece. Now, currently, what is uh, what classifies a woman under the dime piece motif is what I described beginning on page 110 and verse 2. And here it says, the hot Western and continuously expanding globally woman or the 10 slash dime is one who, for the most part, has somewhat exaggerated and often enhanced features such as saucer-like and smoky brown eyes, pouty lips, airbrushed skin, a tapered waist, and a curvy to fat ass. Pretty much varying shades of the Kardashian-Jenner motif. According to the Master Teacher BGS's Idmore's Octane Scale, the 100 octanes would rate at either a 10 or 9 on the s &B scale. However, this is only for a limited window of time until her youth, beauty, and perceived innocence fades. So let's keep in mind that women who uh, hold that dime piece status only hold it for a limited period of time. And what's interesting about the examples of the current motif of what uh, is classified as a Western dime in this generation, this modern space, is that it's transitioning, it's shifting. Even within that example of that family, it's shifting from the Kardashian motif to the Jenner motif as the younger uh, of the sisters is now moving into that space. And it can be discussed and uh, debated back and forth uh, regarding <clears throat> who better represents that uh, status uh, and how long that lasts or whatever. But the point of this is to get to this next stage and how a masculine master observes a 3D woman, to get a 3D depiction of a woman that you, the man who is self-aware and self-developing and self-improving, how you observe a woman that you desire comes to this. This is a representation of the code of a 3D woman's image. And to continue using this particular example of the dime piece, we see that uh, the Kardashian-Jenner uh, motif presents us with this 3D image of these women. Now, on my next post, I'm going to go into further depth as far as what this three-dimensional image code of uh, a modern woman is, but for the sake of the completion of this post, let's take a look at what the code looks like. First, we have Kim Kardashian's code. Now, <laughs> Kim is a 92 octane, uh, natural 92. That was a lawyer. Uh, mother is maintaining that status and lifestyle of the 92 octanes. 
Um, she's also the queen bee of her female group hierarchy of or her face. So that's a 92Q-10, which represents her current status as uh, the Western uh, example of a dime or a hot chick. Second, we have Kylie Jenner, who is a part of the Kardashian female group hierarchy, and she comes right underneath Kim as the top mistress in uh, Kim's female group hierarchy. So Kylie would rank as a uh, 92T-10 as she as is a part of that uh, current trend of what is considered hot at in the Western society. So real quick, here is, is an example of um, a person who is not in the same space as the Kardashian-Jenner family, uh, but is a true and certified 92 Queen Bee Dime. This is the 2019 Miss America, Nia Franklin. And we'll get further in, in depth as far as her profile and a few others that provide great case studies for how a masculine master observes uh, women on multiple dimensions in order to know who it is that he is targeting and is the object of his desire in the space of modern seduction. Select men, pre-select men, non-select men. Like, comment, share, subscribe. And as always, this is your man Cousin T, aka the Alpha Wingman saying, stay sharp and mission focused.